Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, <clears throat> and the rough ways shall be made smooth, <clears throat> and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. So to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fellow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes to rain righteousness on you. <clears throat> so prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, <clears throat> and the rough ways shall be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Oh, wow. Isn't that some scripture? That's from Luke chapter 3, verses 4 to 6, or <clears throat> you can find it first from the prophet Hosea, Hosea, we would say, Hosea 10, 12. And I thought it was wonderful of the Lord. I asked the Lord, what, what shall we sing, Lord? <clears throat> and I didn't quite understand why that one. But now that I think about it, <clears throat> the scripture we will be reading this morning is from Numbers, Bamidbar, Bamidbar in Hebrew, Numbers chapter 26, Numbers 26, and it's all about a new census. We've done this before, haven't we? A new census to form an army because God is going to have them march on now. We've gone through this whole Balaam donkey story. And Balaam was used by God in all of his straightening out needs <laughs> to bless Israel. He pronounced a great blessing, and the enemy left, totally disgusted. Was that part of the preparation, perhaps, for the Lord to say, okay, now, next chapter, we will form this new census, and I'm heading you down the road and we're going to have an army ready to fight your way into here, to this promised land. Okay? So, if you will turn, please, to Numbers 26. We will begin. How do you like my new cup? I saw that on the store and I said, I gotta have that. And what was it? 398. Ah. Oh. I love it. <clears throat> so it's been sitting on my counter teaching me that kindness matters. And it came to pass after the plague, remember they went through that again too, that the Lord spoke to Moshe and Eleazar, the son of Aaron, the priest, saying, take a census of all the congregation of the children of Israel from 20 years old and above by their father's houses, all who are able to go to war. Okay, that's the whole purpose. It isn't just, I want to know how many people. It's how many people are able to go to war in Israel. So Moshe and Eleazar the priest spoke with them in the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho. We, I can picture it, saying, take a census of the people from 20 years old and above, just as the Lord commanded Moshe and the children of Israel who came out of the land of Egypt. Reuben, <clears throat> okay, now we're going to begin. Now, don't lose heart, because this is very important. 
<clears throat> even just the system, the organization. I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing. So they start with the oldest son, Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, and the children of Reuben were Hanuk, the family of the Hanukites, of Palu, the family of the Paulites, of Hetzoran, the family of the Hetzoranites, of Carmi, the family of the Carmites. These are the families of the Reubenites. Those who were numbered of them were 43,730, were 20 or above, and they were able to be warriors. And the son of Palu was Eliab. The sons of Eliab were Nemuel, Datan, and Abriam. These are the Datan and Abriam representatives of the congregation who contended against Moshe. But God spared him. Remember that? They contended against Moshe and Aaron in the company of Korah when they contended against the Lord. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up together with Korah. When that company died, when the fire devoured 250 men, <clears throat> remember that? They put fire in their censers and here they were doing their own thing. And God just had the earth swallow them up. And they became a sign, didn't they though? Nevertheless, the children of Korah did not die. There you go. The sons of Simeon, according to their families, were of Nemuel, the family of the Nemuelites, of Yamin, the family of the Yaminites, of Yakin, the family of the Yakinites, of Tzerah, the family of the Tzerhites, of Shaul, the family of the Shaulites. These are the families of the Simeonites. 22,200. We're gathering the army. The sons of Gad, according to their families, were of Zephon, the family of the Zephonites, of Haggai, the family of the Haggites, of Shuni, the family of the Shunites, of Osni, the family of the Osnites, of Eri, the family of the Erites, of Irod, the family of the Erodites, of Eri the family of the Erlites. These are the families of the sons of Gad, according to those who were numbered of them, 40,500. Glory to God. The sons of Judah, we would say Judah, were Er and Onan. And Er and Onan died in the land of Canaan. Remember that? Here they were having that great celebration Temple's finished. We're going to start off. And these guys put fire in their censers. God didn't ask them to. And God had fire out of heaven burn them up right there in front of the congregation. Wow. And the sons of Judah, according to their families, were of Shelah, the family of the Shelanites, of Perez, the family of the Parzites, of Tzerah, the family of the Tsarhites, and the sons of Perez were of Hezron, the family of the Hezronites, of Hamul, the family of the Hamulites. These are the families of Judah, according to those who were numbered of them, 76,500. The sons of Issachar, according to their families, were of Tola, the family of the Tolites of Pua, the family of the Punites of Yashub, the family of the Yashubites of Shimran, the family of the Shimranites. These are the families of Issachar, according to those who were numbered of them, 64,300. And you know the, the word that keeps being used over and over here that just blesses my heart, is it always says, these are the families. The families. The families were together. All right, moving along on this March 17. I forgot to mention that. 
March 17, I mean, happy Patty's Day to y'all. The sons of Zebulon, according to their families, were of Sered, the family of the Sardites, of Elon, the family of the Elonites, of Yalil, the family of the Yalilites. These are the families of the Zebulonites, according to those who were numbered of them, 60,500. I wonder how long it took. Count them all up. The sons of, we would say, Joseph, Yosef, according to their families, by Manasseh and Ephraim, were the sons of Manasseh, of Machir, the family of the Machirites, and Machir begot Gilead, of Gilead, the family of the Gileadites. These are the sons of Gilead, of Yeser, the family of the Yeserites, of Helek, the family of the Helekites, of Asiel, the family of the Asrielites, of Shechem, the family of the Shechemites, of Shemeda, the family of the Shemedites, of Heper, the family of the Heperites. Now, Zelophehad, <clears throat> the son of Heper, had no sons. I think that kind of hurt in the heart there as we're gathering all these sons. But daughters, he had daughters. I love it. And the names of the daughters of Zelophehad were Mala, Noah, Hokla, Milka, and Tirsa. These are the families of Manasseh. And those who were numbered of them were 52,700. These are the sons of Ephraim, according to the families of the Shuthelah, the family of the Shuthelites, of Becher, the family of the Bachrites, of Tahan, the family of the Tahanites. And these are the sons of Shuthelah, of Aaron, the family of the Aaronites. These are the families of the sons of Ephraim, according to those who were numbered of them, 32,500. Oh, Scott is here. Bokertov, brother. I mean, lay it on us. Give us some, give us some rich stuff. <laughs> These are the sons of Yosef, according to their families. It always helps me, Scott, to listen to Joseph. I get a little better Hebrew, I think. I hope. The sons of Benjamin, according to their families, were of Bela, the family of the Belites, of Ashbel, the family of the Ashbelites, of Ahiram, the family of the Ahimites, of Shupam, the family of the Shupamites, of Hupam, the family of the Hupamites, and the sons of Bela were Ard and Naaman of Ard, the family of the Ardites, of Naaman, the family of the Naamites. These are the sons of Benjamin, according to their families, and those who were numbered of them were 45,600, from 20 years old and up, told to get ready as soldiers. These are the sons of Dan, according to their families of Shuham, the family of the Shuhamites. These are the families of Dan, according to their families. All the families of the Shuhamites, according to those who were numbered of them, were 64,400. The sons of Asher, according to their families, were of Yimna, the family of the Yimnites, of Yeshui, the family of the Yeshuaites of Beriah, the family of the Berites, of the sons of Beriah of Heber, the family of the Heberites, of Melchiel, the family of the Melchiel, Melchiel probably, and I don't get it in there, the family of the Melchites, and the name of the daughter of Asher was Sarah. 
These are the families of the sons of Asher. According to those who were numbered of them, 53,400. The sons of Nephtali, according to their families, were of Yaziel, the family of the Yazielites, of Guni, the family of the Gunites, of Yeser, the family of the Yetzerites, of Shelem, the family of the Shelemites. These are the families of Nephtali, according to their families. And those who were numbered of them were 45,400. <clears throat> These are those who were numbered of the children of Israel. Are you ready for the total? 601,730. Wow. <clears throat> they amassed <clears throat> an army. And you know, <clears throat> as I picture that happening, and then uh, all these guys that were chosen, uh, they're all talking to one another, I'm sure, you know. Uh, maybe there's training beginning to happen. You know, we aren't told, but you know it, what it takes to form an army. It would have put strength, don't you think? Am I, am I on to a uh, good reasoning, Scott? It would have put strength. I mean, you know, if we run into another enemy, I mean, man, we're, we know who's called out. We, we know who's ready and wham, we can handle any situation. Awesome. Awesome. And you know, it relates to all of us. We are the army of the living God. The army of the living God. And hopefully by many families, many families, the children of many strong Christian parents, you know, they are reared and brought up in the church, loving the music, knowing the people, those are their friends. You know, it can all relate. We are an army. All right, let's move right along to Luke. And we are in chapter 2, picking up with verse 36. Luke, chapter 2, 36. Now there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with a husband. You can figure this out, how old and had lived with a husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years. That's a long time to be a widow. Wow. So she turned to the Lord, who did not depart from the temple. She stayed right there, but served God with fastings and prayers. Oh my, what a what a beautiful example for us. Night and day. Night on day. You talk about being in the army. This lady was in the army, called upon by God, night or day for fastings and prayers. And coming in that instant, here's God bringing another person right on time. She gave thanks to the Lord, and she spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Yerushalayim. So when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. And, the, and I love this. This is so beautiful. And the child grew and became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Oh, wonderful. His parents went to Yerushalayim every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Yerushalayim according to the custom of the feast. And when they had finished the days, as they returned, the boy, Jesus, lingered behind in Yerushalayim. <clears throat> Let of his father gone. I mean, he had to have known they were packing up to leave. And Yosef and his mother did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, 
they went a day's journey, and they sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. They probably thought he was with some of his friends, his young boys. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, of course, seeking him. Now, so it was that after three days, I mean, we must have had a very worried mother, Mary. <clears throat> After three days hunting, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And listen to the answer. And he said to them, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Wow. This is called a right-hand turn, a new chapter, right, in Jesus' life. That I must be about my father's business. But they did not understand the statement which he spoke to them. They were upset, looking. And then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject to them. But his mother, we've read this before, Mary, kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Oh, we are bringing up the Lord. And Mary must have been a wonderful, wonderful mother. She kept all these things in her heart. After all, she's the only one who really understood that Jesus was a miracle birth. No man was involved in that birth. Hallelujah. All right, so now we move right along to Psalm 60. Psalm 60, to the chief musician, and it was set to a tune <clears throat> that they called Lily of the Testimony, another miktam of David. And it says here, it was for teaching. When he fought against Mesopotamia and Syria of Zobah, and Joab returned and killed 12,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salts. Wow. Oh, God. <clears throat> you have cast us off. You have broken us down. You have been displeased. Oh, restore us again. You have made the earth tremble. You have broken it. Heal its breaches, for it is shaking. You have shown your people hard things. You have made us drink the wine of confusion. Wow, this kind of rings a bell for today, doesn't it? You have given a banner to those who fear you, that it may be displayed because of the truth. Because of the truth. Selah. Stop a moment. Prostrate. Think on this. That your beloved may be delivered save with your right hand and hear me god has spoken in his holiness i will rejoice i will divide shechem and measure out the valley of sakot gilead is mine and manasseh is mine ephraim also is the helmet for my head judah is my lawgiver Moab is my washpot. Over Edom 
I will cast my shoe. Felicia, shout in triumph because of me. Now there's an awful lot in there to try to have understanding, right? To try to have understanding. Moab is my washbot. All that kind of thing. Who will bring me to the strong city? Boy, this, this almost shouts echoes of preparing that army in the Old Testament, right? Who will bring me to the strong city? Who will lead me to Edom? Is it not you, O God, who cast us off? And you, O God, who did not go out with our armies? Give us help from trouble, for the help of man is useless. Wow. <laughs> Got that? For the help of man is useless. We see that today. Through God we will do valiantly, for it is he who shall tread down our enemies. Oh, let's keep that in mind. That's for us as warriors in prayer. Speaking to this army of God this morning here, this word is, for it is he who shall tread down our enemies. We will call out to him. All right, we wrap up this morning's reading, y'all, with Proverbs 11, verse 15. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 15. He who is surety for a stranger will suffer. The one who hates being sh surety is secure. I mean, somebody comes to you, you hardly know them. I've seen this happen before, this very example. And they wanted this person who, who had fairly, fairly a fair amount of money to sign for this car and to buy this car. This friend of mine thought about it. He said, no. And, and he gave him the reason. He said, I don't believe I know you well enough. And that's quite an investment. And so he, he fell in the category of the one who hates being surety is secure. He didn't risk it. And guess what? That whole car deal was a mess. It fell through. It was, it was a wonderful, wise decision that he didn't help that young man. That young man had some severe lessons to learn first. And my friend would have been stuck with his name on that purchase paper. Ooh, good thing to think over. Wisdom for everyday life. And God's word covers everyday life as well as the supernatural, right? He is an all-consuming God. He knows the hairs, the number on your head. And sometimes when I'm trying to fix my hair, I, I, I think about that. I think, well, I wonder how many there are. <laughs> All right, enough gab. Let's wrap it up in prayer. Warrior prayer, okay? Prayer. Father God, we come to you, Lord, with grateful hearts. We take a hold of our heart this morning, Lord, and we, we check it out. And we, we need to honestly evaluate and say, what, what shape is my heart this morning? Is it troubled? Is it worried? Is it cast down? Discouraged, depressed? Or am I joyful? What condition am I coming to you in? And we can come in any condition. Come as you are. The Lord already knows how you are. So Lord, we all come, all these warriors, all these seekers of you, seeking you, a personal relationship, knowledge of you. So Lord, we call upon our hearts to be grateful, to be thankful. And then Lord, we present in prayer all of the issues. But Lord, first of all, we will obey you 
we will obey you and we will lift up Israel and we will lift up Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, to you. And we pray for her peace. We pray for her peace. We pray for the people, Lord. We pray for those who are about to make their way from far off land where they have lived as strangers, never feeling like they fit in, with a heart brought up to believe that one day they would come to the land. And today that's what you're doing, Lord. You are bringing them home from all across this earth. So we pray for those, Lord. We'd ask that you'd give them courage, courage to step on that plane. <clears throat> Awful lot of them never been on a plane before. And help them, Lord, when they arrive with the language, with instruction, with finding out where they fit in, what they can do. Where is it they're going to put their head? <clears throat> Other people have prepared before they got there. Oh, Father God, we pray for your people. They were surrounded by enemies. I mean, land, vast areas of land all around this little postage stamp, Israel. But it's your mighty right hand who is protecting them, the same mighty right hand that David called out for in the psalm. Oh, Father, be with them, please. Bring wisdom to all the leadership. And Father, I hold up America to you. America is yours. And at this particular time, Lord, we pray for your perfect will. And we see all these enemies. And Lord, like the psalm has taught us, we call upon you for man is useless. But you are the one whose right hand will execute judgment, justice, whatever you say, Lord, that's what's going to happen. So we seek you, and we seek you, Lord, asking, Holy Spirit, please help us. Help us to, like Anna, the prophetess, to be dedicated to fastings and prayers, night and day, available, a soldier available to our commander-in-chief. Help us, Lord. I'd ask, precious Father, you'd... Hear all the prayers, <clears throat> all the praises. You'd hear the cries of the heart. You'd hear the thanksgivings also of all of your people. All of your people. And bring answers today, Lord, please. Help them lift up the discouraged. Father God, please heal those who are ill, particularly those who are they're very near death. Lord, we will keep on praying for them. Keep on praying. You can, you can raise them from the dead if you want to. Lord, help our faith to grow. Help us to be obedient today, Lord, to all that you call each and every one of us to do. Help us not to have good thoughts and then cast them away. Don't do even the small things that Holy Spirit might call us to do. That little note you've been put off writing or that, that telephone call of encouragement that would mean so much to the person. Lord, we tune in to Holy Spirit. We tune in to you, Holy Spirit, to hear you, to seek you, to love you, to be obedient to the instructions and direct to yield lord we yield our lives to you like we have read the great example of anna the prophetess widow 84 years but her life had great meaning father bless each and every one we thank you lord for a brand new day a brand new day Hallelujah. And all of God's people cried, Hallelujah. And 
Scott's teaching, please read it all. Please visit Kathy's graphics. They are so awesome. And she has spent time, oh, many years now, gathering, sorting out, updating, revising for this year. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Melissa, for putting it on YouTube. You can tell all of your friends. They can also find us on YouTube under Jane and Friends 2021. Jane and Friends, capital J on Jane, small letters, and Friends 2021. Love you all. Bless you. Bye-bye.